Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss on a topic architecture of 8086 microprocessor. So, uh, the pre request for this uh, topic is that you should be knowing about the 8085 microprocessor. So, the basic difference between 8085 and 8086 is that 8085 is an 8 bit microprocessor. And this 8086 is a 16-bit microprocessor. So what does what does this uh, mean? 8-bit or 16-bit? 8-bit microprocessor means it can process 8-bit of data at a time. And 16-bit processor means it can process 16-bit of data at a time. So that means it is faster in comparison to 8085. Okay. Now let's start the feature of 8086 microprocessor. So first feature, it is a 16-bit microprocessor. 16-bit microprocessor, that means it has 16-bit ALU, which can process 16-bit of data at a time. It is 16-bit because it has 16-bit registers, which can say 16-bit data, and which can be processed by the 16-bit ALU. Then it has a data width data bus which is of 16 bit. At a time, this data bus can maximum transport 16 bit of data at a time. That's why this is a 16 bit microprocessor because it can process 16 bit of data at a time since it has 16 bit data bus. Then next is 20 bit address bus. 20 bit address bus means this, it has an address bus of 20 bits. In 8085 we have studied the address bus is of 16 bit, lower 8 bit per multiplex with data. 8 bit data bus is then 8 But in this, we have 20 bit address bus and 16 bit data bus. So in this 20 bit address bus, it can access to the power 20 uh, bytes of memory. That is 1 MB memory. 2 power 20 is 1 megabyte of memory. It can access with its 20 bit address bus. Okay. Then operating clock frequency. It can operate with 5 to 10 megahertz of clock frequency. We understood that every electronic device it works with a clock. When we provide a clock, then one operation is performed. Similarly, another clock is uh, provided to the device, then another operation or cycle of operation is performed. So this 8086, it works for 5 to 10 megahertz of clock. This clock is generated by 8284 IC. This uh, IC which will generate clock frequency will be connected to the two pins XLA and XLA1. From there, the clock is provided to the microprocessor. Then we have this microprocessor data operating through both maximum mode and minimum mode. Maximum mode means we can operate our mic uh, microprocessor with other microprocessor also. Like we are connected uh, two or three microprocessors together and they are working in collaboration with them. Like if we are using any uh, heavy mathematical application or heavy, heavy math processing is done, so we will use one another math to processor 8 to 8 cell along with our 8 to 8 microprocessor to, uh, to slower or to lower down the load of 8 to 8 6. So the maximum math work can be done with 8 to 8 7. And microprocessor 8 to 8 can do some other works which are required by the application. So when we are using the number of a microprocessor along with our 8 to 8 microprocessor, then it, it is said to be working in maximum. Then minimum mode, minimum mode when you're working our single 8 to 8 6, then it is a minimum mode. Uh, so they are used to a high performance level to maximize the efficiency of microprocessor. Then this microprocessor can operate in the same thing they are saying, single processor or multiprocessor configuration depending upon the operating mode. Then it has very powerful instruction set. The instruction set of 8086 is very powerful, flexible, and can be programmed in high level language like C level. Like C language can also be used to program this microprocessor. 
So as we have studied the eight zero eight five, in eight zero eight five we don't have these uh, instruction like M U L and I D. So with the help of these instruction M U L and I D, we can directly perform the operation of multiplication and division if the inputs are given to us. Then, uh, so this it has a, a powerful instruction set. Other features are it has two fifty six software interrupts and two hardware interrupts. So we have interrupts uh, in eight through eight six two hardware interrupts NMI and INTR. INMI is non maskable interrupt. INTR is general purpose interrupt which can be used by uh, any device to interrupt the microprocessor. NMI is non maskable interrupt. That means non-maskable means we cannot avoid the interrupt. We have to provide service to the interrupt if 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 it uh, if it interrupts the microprocessor. And other than that, hardware and two hardware. Other than these two hardware interrupts, we have two basic software interrupts. So which are some are user defined, some are program defined, some are already defined by the processor like overflow interrupt. And other uh, one by divide by zero interrupt, and other interrupts uh, are also there. Two interrupts more there. Four five interrupts are there for which are uh, uh, microprocessor defined. If that kind of uh, error occurs, if that kind of situation occurs, then the interrupt is generated. So the next is it has six byte instruction queue for pipelining of. Instruction execution. We will discuss in this, and we will discuss the architecture. Here, there's expired instruction queue. Then, uh, automatic operation can be performed with eight bit or sixteen bit signed and unsigned data. So, for both the signed and unsigned data, eight bit or sixteen bit, we can perform all the automatic operation with the micro eight bit six microprocessor. Then. It can access 64,000 64K input output device the 16 bit input output request. Okay, so these are the features of 8086. Now, coming to the architecture of 8086, the architecture of 8086 is divided into two parts BIU and EU. BIU is bus interface unit, and EU is execution unit. Bus interface unit means uh, we are fetching the data from the memory and putting it into the instruction queue. An execution in unit takes the data from the instruction queue and executes it into ALU and provides the result. So we will understand each and every part of these in detail. So they are uh, coming to the bus interface unit. First, we will discuss bus interface unit. Bus interface unit, you can see there is an address header. Then you can see these registers over here. ES extra segment, CS code segment, SS tag segment, DS data segment, and IP instruction pointer. Now, these are the segment registers. What are these segment registers? Actually, our memory, 808 does not have a memory on its chip. We have a separate entity for memory. Uh, microprocessor 8086 chip is a separate entity and memory is a separate entity. So we have to interface to use it. So the one megabyte of memory is divided into sets, four segments. Four segment, stack segment, data segment, and stack segment. Extra segment. So the starting address of these, the, uh, these segments are stored in these segment register. So what does this segment register do? They hold the starting address of the segments for their corresponding segments in the one megabyte of memory. They are not the segments. They are the, they hold the starting address of the segments which are there in the memory. Corresponding, which are there in the memory. So the corresponding register holds the uh, memory, starting address of the memory. So the code segment, what does code segment do? Code segment store the programs. Where programs are stored, code segment. Data segment store the data. SS and DS store the some temporary data on extra data. They are stored in the 
F is an E segment. So the starting address is told in this net uh, segment register. What does this? Another thing, IP, IP points to the next instruction which is to be executed. Then another term from the offset. Offset contains the end, uh, data or the address. It is the difference from the starting address to the location we were, where we want to go or store the data or retrieve the data. So it is the difference between that memory equation which is required. That is contained in the offset. Now the offset register contains the offset. ESSS and DS, they contain the starting address. Now why do we need all these? These all things are needed to generate the physical address. Physical address are generated with the help of this offset and segment register data. Now, we will take the, suppose we, work, uh, we want to work with port segment. We take the starting address of the port segment register, multiply it to the 10 and add it with the offset register for the port segment. So this thing is done by the address adder. Address adder will generate the physical address. How physical address is generated? Physical address is generated by multiplying the starting address of the segment register with 10 and add it with the offset register. When the both the things are done, adding of the offset plus the uh, segment register multiplied with 10 is done with the physical uh, done with the address header. Now the physical address is generated. Now this physical address is given to the memory interface memory. Now the address which is generated, memory will take out the data from the uh, will take the data from that memory location and put it on the internal data bus. Now the data is generated. Now the data is retrieved from the memory according to the physical address generated by the address header. Now the data is traveling on the data bus, internal data bus. So did you understand the uh, meaning of what, what we are doing here? With the help of address header, we are generating the physical address. Physical address is how the physical address generated. They are generated by multiplying the segment register with 10 and adding with the content of the offset register. Every segment has offset register, its corresponding offset register. So from there, data is taken. So the all the uh, calculation is done, this address header and physical address is generated. And according to the physical address, data is retrieved from that particular location. So data is retrieved from that particular location and is put into the data. Now that data is spread into the instruction. Now this is the six byte instruction. What does this six byte instruction two do? Six byte instruction two, what does it do? It stores the six byte of your program, not the six instruction of your program. It stores the six byte of your program. What does this mean? It means, yes, it can be a six instruction if all the instruction is of one byte. But the size of the instruction is variable depending upon the data. Depending upon our my requirement, so my instruction size can uh, instruction size can be one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, or five byte, or six byte. So depending upon its size, number of instructions are stored. So it basically stores the six byte of your program. Now the six byte of the program is stored in the instruction queue. From here, it will go to the control system. What does this control system do? Control system will decode my instruction. Since the instruction is an assembly language, the control system will decode the instruction and convert it into the assembly language. Sorry, machine language, which can be understood by the uh, machine. So the machine, so the, according to that machine code, control signals are generated and spread all over the application. Now the control signals are generated, instruction is decoded. Now, which is fed into the ALU and according to the from where the data is to be released and from where the manipulation is to be done is upon done according to the control system. Now the data has been shifted to the execution unit or instruction is shifted to the execution unit. Now we have discussed pipeline aggregate. One thing I have missed over here, pipeline instruction works on the basis of P code. First thing, 
for whatever instruction is fed first, it will be taken out. Pipeline instruction fails. Pipeline architecture fails only in the case of branching. If branching is there, then the instruction will become invalid because uh, it, it takes the data sequentially one by one by one, but suddenly branching came, it doesn't know from where it has to be that that thing is manipulated by the processor it has so once it it came to know that it has it has, it has to go to that another address not this uh, momentarily it becomes uh invalid the moment it came to know that it has to go to some another address then the instruction queue will refill it then according to the branching address so uh, that is the one advantage of disadvantage of Pipeline architecture. Otherwise, pipeline architecture is useful for the to increase the speed of processing. Now, one more thing that comes over here: is why we have those two automatic operators? Why we now why can't we do with a single mathematical operator? Why 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 won't we increase the why won't we make the things bulkier? Why won't we increase the cost of IC? Point here and here is if we use the single automatic operator. For both the work, then 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 there will be no concept of pipelining over here because if single automatic operator will do both the things, then once it will execute and another time it will take the uh, takes the instruction from the memory, so it will takes the similar time. So there will be no point of pipelining architecture. So to uh, implement this in pipeline architecture, we have to take Two automatic or one for fetching, fetching, fetching of instruction, another for execution of the instruction. So it keeps on fetching, and this one is to keep on executing the instruction. So in this way, the work is doing simultaneously, Microsoft is doing the work simultaneously, and the speed of the processing has increased. Then coming back to the execution unit, execution unit has ALU, these registers, general purpose register, operand, and flag. Now, ALU, we all know it is an automatic and logical unit. All the automatic and logical operations are performed in ALU. All the automatic and logical operations are performed in ALU. Whatever uh, uh, automatic operations is to be performed, it is done over here. So, where from where we will take the data from the general purpose register? General purpose register, AX, DX, CX, and DS. These registers are used by the programmer only to these registers are used by the programmer only for the temporary storage of data. So the programmer like you want to add AH comma AL. So for their temporary storage, they are using for the general purpose register. So this is the 16-bit register. If I want to 16-bit, I will write AX. If you want to use, if I want to use 8-bit, I will use AH or AL, depending upon my usage. I will use the register. Whether I want to use 16 bit, I will use AX or for 8 bit, I will use AH or AL. Similarly, with BX, CX, and DX. So, all these are general purpose registers which are used. Then we have SP, BP, SI, and DI. So, these are the registers SP stack pointer, BP is base pointer, SI, and DI source index and test station index. Stack pointer contains the top of the stack, address top of the stack address. And all of these three registers below them, they are used as the offset for segment rules. They contain the offsets. Now the operand flag, operand flag is used by the microprocessor only. It is, it is we cannot be as a programmer cannot use the operand flag. Uh, microprocessor use it for its for uh, temporary storage of data. Then flex. So coming to the flex. We have the 16 bit flag register of 8086 containing nine active flags, in which three are controlled flags and six are conditional flags, the rest are non active flags. Conditional flag with depict some condition like if carry is generated, zero is result is zero, sign, overflow, parity, auxiliary, they are all conditional flags. Then Control flag like direction, interrupt enable, and trap direction means you want to change the direction of my program from top to bottom or bottom to top. To. In which direction I want to execute my program. Interrupt if I don't enable this flag, then I cannot, my user cannot uh, provide service to any 
in trap then trap if i will uh, enable these then microsoft will execute the program step by step not in the bulk mode or the fast mode so these are on the flag register of a286 so Function of EU, EU will be a discussed function of BIU first. Uh, BIU perform all these instructions such as uh, fetching of patient perform the reading and writing of memory, address calculation, memory physical address generation is there, uh, done over there. Then instruction queue is there in BIU, which uh, stores the instruction, pre fetching of instruction is there in BIU, controls the address data and control bus BIU. 16 bit by address data bus and 20 bit address bus is there, it's controlled by this. Then the BIU is performing all external bus operation is there, fetching, queuing, print, fetch, and storage, address, relocation, bus control. They all the operation performed by BIU. We have discussed just now. Instruction stream to implement pipeline architecture is performed with the help of instruction queuing BIU. Then EU, EU perform all the execution work is done by the EU. It will, if the queue is empty, you wait for the next instruction by two pairs and ship it to the what happens? He it will not wait wait for the queue to get empty, whole empty. But only for if two space are free, then it will refill the queue. So it will not wait for the whole queue to get empty. Once the two queue, two spaces are uh, free in uh, two locations are free in the uh, uh, queue it refills it. So this is how uh, queue works. Filling of queue happens in the architecture of eight zero eight six. So we have discussed the existing instruction queue. We have already discussed work. It works on P four. Then uh, pipelining. We have discussed decoding work is done. Execution of work is done. Is there in the EU? General purpose register, we have discussed. We have this general purpose register, AHL, PHPL. Segment register, we have discussed. This contains the starting address of the uh, segments. Then, this segment, this offset register, every uh, segment register has an offset register to store its offset. Then, ALU, we know address generator, it generates a physical address instruction decoder, we have discussed. Flag register, we have discussed. Segment register. They will start, they contain the starting address of this particular segment. All these have a specific use of the segment registers. Then we have pointer and index group registers, source index and destination index. Instruction pointer, it points to the next instruction which to be executed. SI and DI, they are the offset register for their corresponding segments. So I hope the topic is clear to you, 8086. So we'll meet in um, for the until the next lecture. Thank you.